good evening everybody welcome to the seventh day of our virtual tour of universe today we are going to show you the planetarium so the moon it will be basically with chandrayaan with us uh, mr satish is there who is from infovision and depending even chandrayaan i will now request mr satish to start the show the moon over to you satish Yes, sir. Good evening to all. Thank you. Each one of us has looked up at a serene moonlit night sky and wondered about the moon. What is it? Why does it shine so brightly? How many mysteries does it hold? Our nearest celestial neighbor has fascinated us since the beginning of human history on Earth. Thousands of years later, we now have the means to touch the dream. Over the next half hour, you will learn a few facts and take a short voyage to the moon, the only natural satellite of Earth. My name is Manish and I'll be your guide. How did our moon come into being? There are many theories about the formation of our moon. The most common one is that about 4.5 billion years ago, soon after the Earth was formed, a large mass-sized object, sometimes referred to as Vea, collided with the Earth and this collision threw a lot of debris around. Vea was larger than our present day moon. It was approximately half the size of the Earth. This impact lasted approximately 30 minutes and changed the Earth forever. Vea was destroyed. The impact vaporized a large amount of the other object and scattered pieces around the Earth. The core of Thea fell onto the Earth where it sank and combined with Earth's core. Within a week, most of the slower moving debris had fallen onto the earth. Some of the debris was moving fast enough to be thrown out into space away from the earth. The rest of the impact debris went into orbit around the earth where the chunks of rock slowly collided with each other and became large clumps of rock. Small pieces that collided with these large clumps stuck. We call this process of collecting all the small pieces onto the larger objects accretion. In less than a hundred years, we had our moon. Currently, the moon is at a distance of 384,000 kilometers from us. But this distance varies due to the elliptical orbit. Ancient Indian astronomers have observed the moon for over 3,000 years. It plays a major role in all rituals of the Hindu calendar which is followed even today. Greeks and other civilizations worship the moon. A large part of the fascination lies in the fact that part of the moon seems to be permanently hidden away from us. This is because it is always in synchronous rotation with our planet, which means that the rate at which it rotates around its axis is the same rate at which it goes around the Earth. This also means that we will always look at one side of the moon. 
the compelling mystery of the dark side of the moon has been associated with the occult for millennia. Apart from its enigmatic beauty, the moon permeates our daily lives on earth in an important way. The tides on earth are mostly generated by the gradient in intensity of the moon's gravitational pull from one side of earth to the other, the tidal forces. This forms two tidal bulges on earth which are most clearly seen in elevated sea level as ocean tides because earth spins about 27 times faster than the moon moves around it the bulges are dragged along with earth's surface faster than the moon moves rotating around earth once a day as it spins on its axis the ocean tides are magnified by other effects frictional coupling of water to Earth's rotation through the ocean floors, the inertia of water's movement, ocean basins that get shallower near land, and oscillations between different ocean basins. The gravitational attraction of the Sun on Earth's ocean is almost half that of the Moon, and their gravitational interplay is responsible for spring and neap tides. In the past 400 years or so, the science, as we know, began to take root in Europe. Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei used the newly discovered optical instrument, the telescope, to look at the moon. He observed large craters and recorded them in his observing log book. The moon was not as perfect as it seemed. The surface of the moon is littered with craters big and small. These were thought to be water bodies at first and named Maria or the seas. It was later discovered that these craters were created by the forceful impact of multiple asteroids and comets crashing onto this surface. These events occurred in large numbers because the moon does not have an atmosphere to prevent or mitigate such collisions. Each large impact would create dramatic geological disturbances resulting in volcanic activity. The situation is not dissimilar to that which caused the extinction of dinosaurs from the earth and gave rise to the Tekken volcanism. In the case of the moon, the hot molten lava flows and cools to form Maria seas of lava. In India, the famous Lona crater is an excellent example of what an asteroid crashing down can do. It is so large, it can be seen from space. Could there also be water on the moon? If so, is the moon habitable? Humans have always had an unquenchable thirst to conquer the moon in the hope that it could be colonized. With the advent of rocket technology in the 1950s and 60s, the United States and USSR locked themselves into a space race, a race that would culminate at the moon. The USA, under the guidance of Werner von Braun, launched the Apollo missions and reached the moon in July 1969 and Commander Neil Armstrong became the first man to set foot on lunar soil. His words, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, are now synonymous with the spirit of exploration and discovery. India also has its own moon exploration program. On 27th October 2008, the Indian Space Research Organization launched Chandrayaan-1, a lunar orbiter to study several aspects of the moon's surface, 
the spacecraft was carried aloft by the extended version of the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV, which is the workhorse rocket of the ISRO. It became the first spacecraft to confirm the presence of water on the moon. Most interestingly, heavier elements such as sulfur were also observed. The spacecraft also carried with it a small impact probe that sent back several beautiful pictures of the lunar surface before crashing on the moon. India returned to the moon with the Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft carried aloft by the GSLV Mark III on 14th of July 2019. Chandrayaan-2, unlike Chandrayaan-1, has a lander Vikram with a rover Pragyan apart from the orbiter. And we have liftoff. As the rocket soars higher and higher, the first two stages separate at different intervals. The third stage, which has the cryogenic engine, ignites. Finally, after a few minutes, it shuts off and Chandrayaan-2 separates, marking an important milestone in the historic mission. She gains altitude. The solar panels are deployed and increases its orbit in five stages. Chandrayaan-2 revolves around the Earth five times to gain velocity. Then, at one point, at the end of the fifth orbit, which is after a week, Chandrayaan-2 joins the highway to the moon or what is known as the lunar transfer trajectory. After a few days, it executes the crucial entry into the lunar orbit, which is known as the lunar orbit insertion. Meanwhile, the orbiter will go around the moon in a 100 by 100 kilometer orbit and keep a constant eye on the moon and the lander. Vikram is now scanning the landing site. As Vikram and Prakyan prepare for the crucial descent to the moon, ISRO scientists are keeping a tense watch glued to their computers in the Mission Operations Control Center at Bangalore. Post separation from the orbiter, Vikram with Pragyan executes some complex maneuvers before starting the nail biting descent called 15 minutes of terror. When all was go for landing, Vikram initiates deboosting procedures. It is the first moon mission in the world to touch down on the South Pole region of the moon with a rover. Hold your breath and keep your fingers crossed. But then what happened? If all had gone well, Vikram would have pulled off a soft landing on the moon around 2 a.m. on September 7 with Pragyan. It had started scanning the touchdown zone. The primary touchdown zone was between two craters, Manzinus and Symbolis. Located 350 kilometers north of South Aitken Basin Rim.
it would have been a day of celebration all India. As Vikram was heading towards the touchdown zone at 1.51 a.m., two kilometers above the lunar surface, it lost communication with the Earth. A mood of disappointment descended in the control room with the ISRO team trying to figure out what happened. Later, Vikram Lander and debris were spotted in images taken on November 11th by NASA. What would Vikram have done if it had soft landed successfully? It would have started clicking images and say hi to the orbiter and ground stations. Then after four hours, Prakyan would have rolled out from Vikram and the scientific experiments would have been initiated. There are 14 instruments out of which are 13 India made and one from NASA. Eight from orbiter, three from lander and two of the rover. The mission span of Vikram and Prakyan is one lunar day which is equivalent to 14 Earth days. The life of Orbiter, which was initially just a year, has been stretched to seven years because of the precise launch and perfect mission management. Prakyan, equipped with solar power, would have moved up to 500 meters. The main aim of the mission was to hunt for water. Data would have been transferred from the rover to the lander and then on to the orbiter and to the ground stations. From the lander, signals would have also been sent directly to the ground stations. The other scientific goal is to provide a deeper insight into the beginning of the solar system. Scientists will be able to have a better understanding of the moon's composition. touchdown had been successful, the Indian tricolor and the Ashok Chakra would have been on the moon. The rover would have probed the lunar surface. Both the lander and rover would have also focused on the moon's mineralogical, topographical and various other facets of the moon. The ultimate goal of the mission is to explore the possibility establishing a human settlement on the moon. If the mission had been pulled off, India would have joined the select three member countries. The US, 
Russia and China of soft landing on the moon. India would have become the fourth country. The mission will benefit not only those in India but people all over the world. This mission has triggered enthusiasm among the younger generation to study science, technology, engineering and mathematics. It's a giant leap for India even though it missed history by 0.0006%. But it is not a complete failure because the orbiter is performing very well. It has taken high resolution images and made a number of scientific breakthroughs like measuring solar flares and observing charged particles. NASA is planning to use the data from the orbiter for finalizing its Artemis mission. The human return to the moon with the first woman and man landing in South Pole region of the moon in 2024. It is possible to envisage a human colony living on the moon by the end of the century. And then what? In case humans were to successfully colonize the moon, what would be the effect on our species? That is one question we need to ponder on. For example, when astronauts fly to orbit, it is a known fact that their spinal column extends by about two inches. This is because the effect of gravity is less as we go further from the Earth's surface. If we take this point into consideration, we can safely assume that human species on Moon would be considerably taller. It is not the Earth alone that has a natural satellite. Gas giant Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune also have not one but many moons. They vary in size and shape, while planet Mars has two small moons, Phobos and Deimos, which are irregular shaped rocky bodies. Jupiter has 63 known moons, of which the Galilean moons Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto are important owing to their uniqueness. Io is a volcanic moon, while Europa harbors a frozen ocean. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. Even the dwarf planets Pluto and Eris have satellites. Perhaps they would have similar and habitable environments. If so, the dream to colonize our solar system would be well underway. The question does arise whether these satellites are already inhabited and if so, what the natives would think about us invading their territory. Your guess is as good as mine. In the meanwhile, exploring the vast potential of the moon will remain at the forefront of human endeavor for the foreseeable future. Thank you.